you sicken me. Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting video in which I talk about King of the Hill. If you had told me that the whopping three videos I made for King of the Hill would net me 1,000 subscribers, I would have been churning out King of the Hill videos a lot more often. In gratitude, I will make more videos on King of the Hill. Instead of lists, I'll be taking a different approach and talk about particular episodes that can still be seen as extremely topical today, a testament to how timeless this show actually is. So today, we are going to take a look at the infamous episode, Racist Dog, Season 7, Episode 20. Okay, so full stop, I'm just going to take the L on this one. This should have been on my top 10 worst episodes list. Not just an honorable mention, but on the list. I guess my mind just blocked it out with how infuriating this episode can be. So let's jump in! As far as Koth openings go, this one is pretty hilarious. Bill breaks into Hank's house to drag everyone's lifeless, unconscious bodies out because he smelled gas. The ambulance is called, and we get this classic line from Dale. Wow, I can't believe how fast they've responded considering I didn't give them my real address. So Hank looks into the matter and finds out that he didn't install his new water heater properly, thus causing the gas leak. Because of this, Peggy insists that they hire a professional to do the job, even though Hank wants to do it himself. The local reverend recommends Mac, voiced by the late and great Bernie Mac. Wait a minute. Mac. Bernie Mac. Whoa, cool. Hank, being upset that someone else is going to fix his water heater, insists on watching Mac while he works. After a bit of conversation, you see that Mac isn't that different from Hank. Did you know that I've been repairing water heaters and water heater accessories for over 20 years? And it appears they can start getting along. Hank even shares a funny story to get on more friendly ground. I had this fellow one time, nice fella, a chiropractor. <laughs> he tried to use first stage plastic tubing for a second stage regulator. And then Mac ruins it. I bet I can top that. I know a guy installed a brand new water heater without checking the old Gunsum seals. Next thing he knew, he woke up on his own front lawn after his neighbor dragged him to safety. Nice fella. Propane salesman. Wow, dude, as if Hank wasn't feeling crappy enough already. Who speaks that way to someone when they're in their house? So he starts working on the heater, much to the chagrin of Hank, and Lady Bird immediately starts getting aggressive. So much so that Mac works with the door closed, which is plenty fair, but Hank wants to watch him anyway. Mr. Walker, you in there? Yes, I'm in here! The door seems to be locked, but there's no lock on this door. I tied it off with a cord. Look, I, I still have the right to observe your work. But Mac tells Hank that he doesn't feel safe since Lady Bird keeps growling. Hank is convinced that Lady Bird wouldn't hurt anyone and tries to get him to pet her. When she continues to bark at Mac, Mac comes to this logical conclusion. She's full of hate. Black hate! Uh, what? Hank laments to the guys who find the idea of Ladybird being aggressive crazy. Also, quick note, they're doing their drinking beer wine down in the middle of the day. That's weird. Anyway, Bill defends Ladybird saying she's a sweet dog. Yeah, Ladybird's so nice she'd let someone eat out of her own bowl. But then drops another logic bomb for this episode. Of course, I'm white. Uh-oh, the evidence is really piling up, huh? At lunchtime, tensions seem to be eased, and Mac admits that... I admit maybe I threw the race car at your dog a little too fast. Uh, you think? However, when Hank opens the door to the backyard, Lady Bird charges in and bites Mac. Pretty nastily, too. Hank again tries to convince Mac that Lady Bird is not prejudiced, and Mac throws in the next logic bomb. I know she's not prejudiced. She's racist. Despite Hank's protests and logical explanation that she may have just been afraid of a stranger, for the sake of the plot, this happens. Hello, you must be Mr. Hill. I'm your new mailman. Mr. Peters retired yesterday after 25 years. Boy, that was some party. Yes, you would. Hank tries to talk about it to the guys, but finds no help or reassurance. And when he talks about it with Peggy, she is also of little help. We cannot have that dog running amok, biting every black person she sees. It makes us look like ignorant rednecks. Oh, and it's bad for black people, too. Oh, Peggy. Let's put a pin in that moment, shall we? 
So Hank gets the genius idea to ask Bobby to help fix Lady Bird's quote-unquote racism by watching MTV. Gotta admire the effort. When that surprisingly doesn't work, he takes Lady Bird to a training center. There he is asked what Lady Bird's problem is, to which he replies she's a biter. The trainer doesn't seem to believe it at first, and then we get this meme-worthy moment. Uh, actually, she only bites, uh, black people. And Hank has the idea that she may have just been born that way. The trainer assures Hank that his dog isn't racist, and drops another logic bomb. You see, dogs only follow subconscious cues from their owners. What does that mean? That means that you are the one who is racist, Mr. Hill. <laughs> he is, in fact, racist, in plain view of all of the people there. At work, Hank's co-worker, Roger, a previous one-off character that returns just for this episode and is now voiced by someone else, also finds the idea of Hank being racist laughable. He tells Hank that he knows he isn't racist, and that if he wants, he can take a racism test. You know, just to be sure. Oh boy, great! There's a test to find out if Hank is racist, and look how effective and valid its parameters are. But I don't remember what keys to press. Does letter E stand for white or black, and, and what's I? Is it good or bad? I, I don't know. Just push one! You don't have time to think about it! That's how the test works! It's on a subconscious level! So Hank takes the bogus test while the rest of his co-workers come in and check it out. They too say Hank isn't racist. However, the results of the test show... ...that you strongly prefer the company of white people. What? Wow, and the strongly is flashing. And I guess that's enough convincing for them. Let's just disregard all of the years that these people have known Hank. Hank, the same person that got Roger the job at Strickland Propane and had a good working relationship with Enrique. Hank, who was good friends with his Asian neighbor despite the fact that Khan is regularly a jerk to him. Maybe I keep garage in SUV! <laughs> Kiss my ass! So Hank is not only immediately shunned by his co-workers, but is also put on the spot in the middle of church. Unfortunately, there are some people in the world who would prefer to keep white crayons in their own backs, separate from the other crayons. And what do these wonderful churchgoers do? Point the finger of judgment and continue to let word of mouth spread. Peggy is given racial tolerance dolls by the Reverend after humiliating Hank in the middle of service. The dolls, I guess, are supposed to train Hank into not being racist somehow. But first, according to Peggy and her logic, he has to admit that he's racist first. Admit it! Sorry, Hank, but it's part of the treatment. Now admit it! Bobby sees the dolls and decides to play with Hank. Hello. Have you seen a big fluffy kitty running around here? Hank actually going along with this is much more laughable than this episode's entire plot. Not gonna lie. But again, for the sake of plot and bad timing, Ladybird takes the doll and tears it up in front of a group of strangers outside of his house. What the heck are these people even doing there? I'm pretty sure that's trespassing, and I'm sure most of the people out there don't even know Hank. Okay, we're almost done here. Let's just power through. Another repairman comes in, and Hank is again agitated. He's also a bit rude to Hank as well, and Ladybird again attacks. But before he pulls her off him, Hank realizes a wonderful thing. I don't know what got into her. She just started biting this white guy. Uh, Hank, are you going to pull her off of him? Ladybird's biting a white guy. A white guy, Peggy. Uh, your dog is still attacking someone, Hank. Subconscious cues. But I don't hate black people. I hate repairmen. Hank, your butt is looking at a giant lawsuit. Is Reverend Stroop still here? She's got to see this. Let's go get her before they start another song. Yeah, okay, Hank. Let's let everyone see how not racist you are, but have a bunch of witnesses to your dog attacking someone anyway. Guess you're okay with your dog, Ladybird, being put on the vicious dog list as long as everyone knows how not racist you are. To close, Hank brings his dog back to Mac to convince him one last time that neither he or Ladybird are racist. He tells him that Ladybird attacked someone else, but he was white, so it's okay. She just hates repairmen because Hank hates repairmen. And just in case Mac isn't convinced... 
I checked, and he's Scotch-Irish all the way back. Hank checked. I guess he had to make sure himself. The end. Hank's taking the racist test. Oh, wow. Is he a racist? We don't know yet. <sighs> this episode is frustrating, but strangely topical. And I'm going to try and break this down as best I can, because there are a lot of thematic elements here that need to be addressed. First of all, let's look at the plot. In order for this plot to move forward, we have to disregard other episodes in which professionals enter the Hill home that clearly agitate or anger Hank. Lady Bird is not shown at all. If this sort of behavior is to be expected with people in the house that make Hank mad, why is Lady Bird only now being aggressive? We know that Lady Bird can get on the offensive for Hank's sake. She's done it before in the raccoon episode. So there's an issue right there. But okay, let's just say in her older age, she got more aggressive. I'll buy that. Because in the grand scheme, this issue is minuscule compared to everything else. One of the biggest problems I have with this episode isn't necessarily how quickly people jump on the Hank is racist train. It's how fast they throw him under the bus to show how not racist they are. Peggy said it best here in that pin I mentioned. She's not concerned with Hank's perceived racism first, she's concerned with how it makes them look first. It's such a superficial concern. And look how the other churchgoers behave. They have an unsolicited gathering on his lawn to pray for his racist heart. Um, excuse me? Can someone explain to me how gathering on someone's lawn and singing is going to make someone not racist? Does Daryl Davis make a difference by singing on people's lawns without speaking to them? Let's look at it like this. Say someone doesn't know how to read. Does ostracizing him and praying on his lawn suddenly teach him how to read? And I wager that a bunch of them don't even know what the situation is, and they don't even bother to ask. They just let word of mouth spread that Hank is racist. No examples, no explanation. Just going with it because, of course, they aren't racist at all and need everyone to know that they won't tolerate a racist man. No one is even willing to talk to Hank about this, and none of his friends or colleagues speak in his defense. You know, because he took a test, and the test is more valid in determining one's personality instead of actually knowing someone for a long time. It's laughable that people, even today, think that this behavior is somehow going to make the world a better place. I'm not saying it's wrong to want to do good on behalf of other people, but have it actually do something. We seem to have fallen into some sort of place where it's more important to show others that you're not part of the problem instead of addressing the actual problem. So how do we address the actual problem? Well, for starters, it's good to know actual racism when you see it, and not just call something racist by default because a situation involved people with different skin colors. Look. I understand that now, more than ever, racial tension is high, and I would like to be in a place where it can be discussed openly without hostility. But what Hank goes through in this episode is not much different than what we see today. It seems that people that have been accused of racism have to deal with mob mentality and are being further harassed, losing their jobs, and even receiving death threats for a mere accusation in the absence of any explanation or context. Such mentality doesn't address the issue. I understand that hurtful people that do hurtful things makes you angry and it makes you want to do something, but answering apathy and hate in order to fight apathy and hate is not going to fix apathy and hate. Only compassion can do that. None of the perceived problems with Hank are being addressed in this episode. They're just trying to win brownie points with each other by saying they don't associate with him. That is not going to get anybody anywhere. And sadder still, if any did speak up in defense of Hank, they'd probably immediately be accused as well. Even Peggy feels she can hide behind her test results because she strongly prefers the company of black people. Ugh. But what is to say about the writing of this episode? Well, some of the dialogue is kind of funny. If you found those dolls in my room, I swear I've never seen them before. Mom, why is Mr. Dotree kissing Dad? Oh. oh, yeah! Strongly prefer the company of black people. Well, you can't argue with results, Hank. Quite honestly, I think it's a pretty good test. But my most glaring issue with this is, they already did this plot better in the first season when he met Khan. 
And that was only like a small part of the episode, not the entire plot. So are you Chinese or Japanese? Oh. It's clear that he and his friends are ignorant of other Asian cultures, but at no point do they say they won't associate with him just because he's Asian. They're not even uncomfortable with that fact. They just have a bit of a culture shock. Let's look at Hank and where he lives. The city of Arlen is based off of Richardson and Garland, Texas, in the DFW area. The DFW area is incredibly diverse, and population mixing was on the rise in the mid-90s. How do I know? Because I grew up in the DFW area. The first episode to introduce Khan was very topical for the area and the time period. And one line in Khan's introduction episode nails it better than the entirety of this dumb episode. What the hell kind of country is this where I can only hate a man if he's white? Or let your dog attack a repairman for a few minutes. Funny how Hank's racism accusations were shut down pretty tight with his detractors when he said that. So what we have here is a plot that consists of a made-up accusation that is perpetuated by the main and secondary characters acting incredibly stupid. You have characters believing an arbitrary test that absolutely no one verified and took its results at face value, validating something they should have known not to be true. And you have a resolution that comes to light only when Hank's dog is allowed to attack a white guy, showing he's not racist. He just hates repairmen. And that was Racist Dog, a problematic episode that appeared during the season in which King of the Hill experienced a deep decline in quality. I don't inherently have a problem with shows or episodes that center around issues with race and racism. In fact, I think it's a topic worth discussing at length. I do, however, have a problem when it's handled this poorly. Koth has shown in the past that they can handle this subject and other heavy subjects with dignity and with plots that flow organically. This episode is just a mess that hinges on flimsy plot conveniences and contrived subversion of all of the characters. Alright, I had about enough I can take from this stupid episode. If you liked this video, feel free to let me know. And if there are other episodes you'd like me to discuss, consider leaving a suggestion. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Harvey McLeod, and I'm here to make videos for you. And I'll see y'all next time.